go again. Okay, so we'll start with questions from Jeremy. Uh, no social media posts during the broadcast after the press conference. We'll move on to the stage briefly in Barbara at 10.30 tonight. Jeremy, do you want to go start it? Thank you. Okay. Um, Marco Silva has lost his job last night at Everton. Um, this one, when you've spoken to him, what do you think of that news? Not yet. Too early. Too early, I think. Sad days when you lose your job. And I, I think it's not the moment to speak with him. He knows that I like him. He knows that I'm his friend. He knows that I'm sad with the situation. But he also knows that uh, tomorrow is another day and uh, keep going, keep fighting. The speculation that he may be replaced by another Portuguese, Victor Pereira, is he a fan of his? You are right, speculation. I don't know if it's true, if it's not true. Let's wait to see who comes, who comes next. Josie, after uh, Old Trafford, Suppose we've seen now two goals in every game. What do you need to sort out of the defense? Yeah, but we have to sort out the defense without uh, losing what we have in attack. We can see two goals in, uh, in each one of my four matches, but we, sc we score in one of them. And uh, we could score even more than what, than what we did. But you are right. We are conceding too much, and we are conceding some, what I used to call, cheap goals. And we have to try to stop it. The best way to do it is to work. Um, we have no time to work at the time. Um, after the United game, yesterday was a day of complete re recovery. And today was the second recovery day, the day before the next game. So the conditions to, to work on the pitch are not, uh, are not the best. So less work, more analyze, more meetings, more talk. I'm not a meetings coach, I am a pitch coach. That's where I really like to coach is, is on the pitch and I think it's a way where you can accelerate all the process. So let's wait a little bit to next week where we have of course final match but will be a match where uh, I'm going to, to rest some, some players so I will work with the players that are not going to be, to be involved um, and let's wait also for the, the week uh, before the weekend I think 22 23 of December because it's on the beach where we can really improve things but to analyze to comment to coach in the meeting room helps so hopefully we get um, we get some some positive things after some negative things we have look just at the moment, um, Spurs are nine points behind Chelsea in the fourth. And we've taken in this morning, Chelsea have had their transfer ban lifted, which means obviously they can spend in January. Is that bad news, do you think, for Spurs in the top four? No, I, I, I'm not worried with that. I'm not, first of all, I'm not looking to Chelsea or to the distance we have to Chelsea. I think uh, between us and Chelsea, there are still two or three teams. I think Wolves, United, uh, I don't know, two or three teams. So we cannot look so so high and so far for, for this moment, so I'm not looking to them at all. The second uh, situation for me is uh, that it's not easy to get better players than they have. They have very good players. So I don't think even with the, with the band and even with an hypothetical multi-million budget to spend, I'm not very, very sure that they can get much better play than what they have. Coming back to the defence, so is it something you think you can improve, or do you just think it's something that needs to be reinforced with these signings? It's not the, it's not the defence, it's the defensive process, which is a difficult thing. 
when we speak about defense, we speak normally about the keeper, about the center backs, so the mistakes we do in the back. That's not the way I look to things. So I don't look to the individual, I look to the defensive process. And defensive process belongs to, to 11 players on the, on the pitch. So is in our organization that we have to resolve our problems is not with with one player is not one signing is is a process. Can we ask you two about Christian Eriksen who have not started yet? Um, there's more talk today about him possibly leaving again in Manchester United again. There's talk. What are your feelings about Christian Eriksen at the moment in the future at Spurs? No, my feelings uh, are until I have and the same official, rather than hypothetical things and, and speculation, there is not much to, to come. The only thing that is very, very objective is that the player in, in the end of, of the season is a free agent. That's the only thing that we, we know on a pragmatic point of view. A part of that cannot come. I was just wondering if you had a chance to speak to Christian about his future yet? Yes. Can I, can I ask what he said? No. <laughs> okay, does he want to stay? I'm not going to answer you. I think that's him that has to tell you. Of course I had a conversation with him. Of course I have to defend the best interests of my, of my club. My club is more important than, than my players. Um, and my players are more important than me. But the club is more important than, than any one of us. So that's the way I that's the way I think. Uh, is he a fantastic player? He is. But the situation is that I have to think first in in the club um, interests. But I'm not going to, to tell you if Christian wants to do it by the personal point of view. What we spoke, I am perfectly fine with it. I have absolutely nothing to hide. I'm just not sharing with you for a question of respect to the player. Um, you mentioned the defence. How much do your defence have to be on it tomorrow with the threat of Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes? It's not my defence. It's my defensive process. It's my defensive process. So it's not about my, it's not about my defenders. It's about our defensive pro process. We know the way they play. We know how dangerous they can be. We know where they are dangerous. We know everything about them. Unless they come with some surprise out of the context that has been that context since they arrived in the, in the Premier League, there are not surprises. But it's difficult to play against them. I know that it's difficult to play against them, and we have to know. But by the defensive point of view, we have to be good collectively because this is not going to be a fight between two strikers and two centre backs. Um, you know, this this team. You on Wednesday night, Tottenham were at their best. Do you think the players will have a reaction and be a lot show a lot more intensity tomorrow? I hope so. That's what we that's what we think. I told uh, one of the things I told to the players was uh, that I saw a sad dressing room a sad birth, a sad plane, and that's not what I like after a defeat. Uh, I think after a defeat you cannot, uh, you cannot be sad. You have to be more than that. Um, I don't know in English how to find a word for that. You have to be like raging or enraging or raging, you know. To be angry, not sad, because to be sad is not going to resolve your problems. You need that reaction. You need that. You need that mentality. And finally, we cannot work on the pitch again. I think the training session yesterday was phenomenal, but was a training session with the players that didn't play against United. Um, so it's difficult. We need time to work. We don't have time to work. I cannot stop the league now and say, okay one month of pre-season and I'm going to work with these guys. I take them to Dubai for a month and we are going to work for a month. We cannot do it. We have to play. So we have to resolve our problems step by step. But it's obvious that we have, uh, we have problems. That's, that's, that's no doubt.
But we have players with quality. A great human dressing room. I like the guys very, very much. But we need to change that feeling of, uh, of uh, feeling sorry about our mistakes and feeling sad with our bad results. We need to be more than we need to be more than that. So do you think it'll be January before you can really have a mark of this Jose Mourinho team? Do you think that's when it will start showing? I think step by step. I think step by step. But since the moment I arrived, it's my team. For good and for bad, for the good things, for the bad things, it's my team. It's my responsibility. You will never, um, you will never you will listen from me that the problems are coming from the past and this kind of things. No, not at all. It's my team since they won. Is my team when we won three matches? Is my team when we lost the last one? And sorry, one away from football. I know you've been to see Anthony Joshua fight before. I just wonder if you think you'll get his title back tomorrow night, if, if you'll be watching it. Is the only bad thing of me getting the job at Tottenham is that I'm not going to be there because I was invited by the Prince to be there. But I prefer to be in the match against London. Do you think Anthony will win? I'm not an expert. I'm just. I just love the sport and I like Anthony very, very much because he's a great kid. I hope he wins. But in sport you can lose. So let's see. what he's doing. That's what he's doing. But um, in the defensive process, we have to get a better dynamic through everybody. And it has to work, of course, with, with the two midfield players and with, with the wingers closing well the spaces. And to try to be more compact and to protect better our defensive line. Because again, I, I, I just can't point my finger and say, is this centre back or is this left back? Or I, I don't like that at all. So we need to improve our defensive process and uh, and uh, and number ten. That is an eight in the defensive process. You understand that the eight, eight, ten, half is also very important for that. But again, we need to do that without losing the nine and a half uh, because that guy is the guy that scores goals and he, he has to keep scoring goals. So I'm really, really happy. And great attitude and great motivation, and I, I think he he underperformed for too long, and I think now he's really really committed of performing at the top level for the most possible time. He's improved so much since he's been in charge here. How, how much do you think that's to do with his response, the job that you given him, and how much is to do with psychology? I think everything is globality, but again. It's more about him than, than about me. I think it's about him. You know, I think he's uh, the natural frustration of a fantastic player that knows that he was underperforming. And that I always say that, uh, of course, you need sometimes what I call external sources of motivation. But if you are waiting for the external sources, it's not enough must be something that belongs to, to, to yourself. And I think now he's in this kind of, of dynamic where he's doing things by, by himself. He doesn't need me to be on his uh, here every day. He's, he's working well, he's playing well, and really happy. Okay, Mr. Valley and then Valley. Joseph, you clearly enjoyed the first couple of weeks at Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. Now, so is there anything you found difficult in those first few weeks, or, or, or different? that I was for so long without working because previously it was just a period between uh, Chelsea and United or Chelsea and Inter uh, you know, four months something like that this was almost a year so it was, it was different for me 
But I have to admit that the club, by the structural point of view, the club is, is fantastic. So in some other clubs, I had to arrive and I had to, in some aspects, try to make things from zero and try even, and even I had to do the, um, the construction, the build up of some departments that were inexistent or working really, really bad. And in here, I found areas where I don't need even to touch. And the other ones where I felt that I need to touch, I need to touch to put people working the way I like. But not because people was not working or was not working well. So I think by the structural point of view, the club is fantastic, really, really fantastic. Can I just ask you, so Giovanni and yourself, so um, I think it's real bet is Vice-President has come out and said that Tottenham combined in January, maybe a deal further, so I think it's a cheaper price. Is that something you'll be recommending to the club, or do you need more time to, to study and process? No, I don't, again, I'm doing my work now to try to, to improve the results and to try to get the best out of the players, and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Giovanni is in Europe for a few years, but France, we PSG, and then Spain is a completely different football world than it is in, in England. There are so many experienced players that they arrive in England and the clique for them is not um, automatic. So a young guy like Giovanni also needs his time to adapt to, to Premier League. And you could see, uh, even with Mauricio, uh, Argentinian man like him, uh, easy communication, surrounded by some boys that speaks French, uh, he speaks English, so even being quite surrounded by, by support is not like he arrives here and he explodes immediately. But you know, the good player he is and uh, give him time to, to develop, I think he's going to be a good player for us. Awesome. Joey, what role do you see for Moose as a sofa? Because she has played as well forward. One of the good things is that we can consider him multifunctional and he can play in various positions. But honestly, I don't think he's a midfield player. The midfield player that plays on the call position number six or the midfield player that plays on, let's say, a double, a double six, I don't think Musa is. But he played with me. And even the last match, he played with me in that position because sometimes the needs of the team are more important than the player. But I think that the best positions for, uh, for Musa is when the team plays with a positional midfielder and he has the freedom to go, or when he plays from the right, uh, like he did against uh, Bord and Mo with Serge coming more on the, on the wide side, on the channel, and him being more central. But I don't think he's a, a position on midfield player. He did play with Mauricio, he, he did play with me, and for sure, without needs, he will play again there, and he can, and he's not obviously a bad, a bad player, but I don't think he's an organizer of the game. I don't think he's the one that has the control of the game. So, what made you put him there against Man United? Because I knew that. Um, that um, Dombella was not in the best uh, in the best conditions. I decided that skip no for a game of that dimension uh, immediately. Eric Dai was one of the few players that was coming kind of with three matches in uh, in um, in a row, and I also felt that um, uh, Lucas could uh, playing in in that forward position could create problems to. Uh, to United, so a combination of, of things, but you ask me which position I think is the best position for him, and I think he's not one of the double midfield players. Okay, so